Oh yeah. So we're going to start and stop three eighths inch from our side panel. And you know, we made the marks on our zipper, but obviously can't see the zipper. So I'm just going to mark that again before I go to my machine. So where those black marks are, that's where I'm going to start and stop. Be extra careful that your zipper panel placket, uh-oh, <laughs> my tape didn't hold, but it's okay because my, my pole's still on over here and put a clip over there. Um, but yeah, so just make sure that you're not sewing over anything that you don't want to be sewing over. And then what I'm doing is I'm feeling where the zipper teeth are with my finger. And then I'm trying to keep my zipper foot aligned on the right side of the my zipper foot to the edge of my panel. But simultaneously making sure that the left side of my zipper foot, or not my zipper foot, my Teflon foot, is touching the teeth over here. But the reason that I'm pushing on my zipper tape is because I want to make sure that there aren't any of those folds or kinks in it like I was talking about before. And if there are, you want to take the time to smooth it out. Get it in there. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is a couple things before we flip this right side out. So first off, I'm gonna clip into my zippers here, or not my zippers, but my um my curves here. Just gonna take my pinking shears and cut some of that excess out. And then you need to trim into this corner right here, but you do not want to trim into your zipper tape. So you're going to be really careful and take your sections apart separately, your exterior and your main. See, so I just trimmed or I snipped right into that corner, but I didn't catch my lining or my zipper tape. And now I'm going to flip and making sure that my zipper tape is not there. I'm going to do the same thing with my lining. And this is just going to help when we get to the next step. Okay. Now yours should be connected still, so don't mind my little flappy guy over here. But now what we need to do is we need to flip our panel right side out. Very, very carefully. So you just run your fingers along the inside of the zipper there. Oh my gosh, looking cute. So here is like the basic shape. Now, if I was an ironing woman, I would take the time and go iron this, which I might after I get the next step done, but that is pretty darn cute. It's a definitely a different combo than what I normally do, but I'm digging it. Okay, so this is where things can get a little crazy. So bear with me. So what I'm going to do, or so what we need to do is we need to lay this exterior front panel down and across our zipper gusset. And then you do the same thing with the lining onto this side. 
And now the trick is to get everything lined up. And I would imagine if um, I had maybe measured differently, I'm not sure why I have this big excess here, but you want everything to be lined up. And so you can see it's gonna encase the zipper. When we sew across here, it's gonna encase that zipper. And then, so it looks crazy right now, but so you just stitch, so you, let me just go over that again. Here's your exterior front. You take your exterior front and you flip it down so that it lays right sides together with your zipper placket. And I want this to be straight. So I'm just being sure that I'm laying it straight and I'm clipping this into place. And then I'm gonna flip to where my lining is and you flip that to where it lays right sides down. And now I'm just looking on both sides here and I can see that it's lined up. So I'm gonna clip that as well. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go stitch and I'm gonna, my goal is to meet up so that I get a nice tight corner here at the zipper tape. Okay, so I even pulled up the directions and looked because I remember this happening to me last time I made the bag too. I had this excess of about a quarter of an inch on the bottom and the side of my zipper gusset. And I'm wondering if it's because I'm laying it flat and I'm not pulling this panel over, which could be it, but I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to pull or apply any pressure. So Aaron, if you watch this video, if you can let me know if I'm doing it wrong, which I probably am. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew, I'm going to start, the pattern calls for 3 8 seam allowance, which down here, it pretty much is that. So I'm going to sew with the 3 8 seam allowance across this whole bottom piece here. But my big intention is to make it's to meet up right here. If you look at it from this side, I want to stitch right to that black line that I made earlier, which is that 3 8 inch mark. So that's what I'm gonna do. Feels weird to stitch at 3 8 It's definitely not my normal MO. And then, so I'm just gonna pull everything nice and flat. Okay, oops, there goes that. Now, because I'm over here, I'm just going to go ahead and flip the other side and do it at the same time. Gosh, Rosie is over there cleaning herself. That sound drives me crazy. All right, let me back you up just a touch. So, now this one might be a little different because my tape came off. and I didn't stitch it closed. Okay, so pull this one here. But see, I get the same thing. It's not quite as big on this side, but you know, it doesn't meet up perfectly. And then I'm gonna flip and lay this one here. Now this is curious because on this side, my lining is very close to meeting up. So something is a little different over here. Something is askew. I'm just going to roll with it. Okay, now we're going to go back over to the other side. We're going to trim and then let's flip it right side out and see what we're looking like. Now, I'm not going to take any of my length off. I'm going to leave it because whenever we flip it, we're going to top stitch this. Oh, yeah, look at that one. So that one basically met up. This one's, this one didn't. Let's see what happens. All right, that side looks cute. See, so it's nice. All right, that side does too. I don't know what happened. Yona say. And so then the idea is to lay everything flat. And now if you're using cotton on both the inside and outside, I would definitely recommend uh, laying this flat on top or um, ironing it so that you get nice crisp edges. I'm just considering if I needed to trim that, but I'm just gonna leave it. But so you can get nice 
crisp edges and then when you top stitch nothing will be weird on the inside I was considering okay look so this is a little bit funky on my inside my lining doesn't quite lay right that's okay we're gonna roll with that But what I was considering, sorry, let me finish the thought here, was actually quilting the front as well to mirror the top. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. Sorry, I'm like thinking about my edges. I feel like they look okay. to decide if I really want a top stitch. I know that that is what you're supposed to do. So the next step would be to flip like so, and then you top stitch across your side seams and then up and all the way around and then back down and across. And I think I could do it. I just want to make sure it doesn't look weird. There's something a little bit funky about that corner, but I think I'm just gonna have to live with it. And just hope that whenever it's all done, it all kind of shakes out. Okay, so I am gonna top stitch. Let's go for it, might as well, right? So I'm just gonna add a couple more clips here. I wanna make sure that everything is nice and crispy and taut before I start my stitching. Um, an alternative here is, oh yeah, see what is going on here? This is like higher. Oh, I think it's higher. Hmm. Hold on. Let's investigate this. Oh, okay. I see it. So my stitch line on the bottom came up a little bit too high. I created the fold here. So I'm going to pull that out. So fix it since I can see it, right? Might as well. Oh, I don't need to go all the way. So I just need to pull my line down a little bit from here. Okay, come on. Okay, I'm just gonna go add, I'm just gonna pull this line straight and come down just a touch lower than there. So I'll be right back. All right, so that looks a little bit better. I just pulled it down just a hair. So now let's get back to where we were. Um, so what I was saying is that you could glue, you could add some glue here, some double stick tape. I don't know why I just did the Vanna White. Add glue here if you'd like. Um, or you could add double stick tape. I think I might add just a touch of glue in here. Let's try it out, shall we? Or maybe get real crazy and put some basting spray. Because what I would like to happen is have this interior, exterior lay really nicely together. That would be the goal. Just spray a little bit. Let's see how this works, shall we? Now this would be a good time to get an iron. Um, but you know, I'm all gas, no brakes. So we're just going to go for it. Okay, that was a little bit of basting spray in there. Add just a touch here. So I'm really going, living life on the edge, spraying without anything underneath it on my cutting mat. Just a wild woman today. 
Ooh, just inhaled some of it. Gross. Okay, so we just want to make sure that everything is as nice as it can be. There we go. Doesn't seem like that basting spray did much with this um, vinyl. Oh, I just had the best idea. So before when I was like, oh, I really want to make one of these just out of all that quilted. Now this is kind of what it would look like, which would be very fun. Uh, my my best friend has a little girl who's older than my niece that I think would love to have an iridescent backpack. Her personality is very iridescent backpacky, so I'll have to make one for her. Okay, so now that we've got all that situated, I'm going to leave it like this. So this is my exterior flat with my gusset up. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start my stitch line over here and I'm gonna come up and carefully stitch all the way around and then back across to here. So this seam that I made here to add the cork accents is definitely really thick because now it's double folded. So now there's six folds right here plus the zipper teeth. So this is an interesting addition that I did. Nothing like a good challenge, right? Speaking of challenge, I started sewing in the wrong direction. Jeez. That and a thousand today. Normally I'd be sewing from this side and I'm gonna pull my stitches, or not pull my stitches, but I'm gonna flip it. I thought it looked a little weird when I started over here, but you know, it felt good, so I went with it. Oops. And I know that you guys probably can't see, so I'll likely just speed this part of the video up. I just have to trust that I'm struggling. nervous to flip it to see what the other side looks like it's always so nerve-wracking whenever you're stitching that and then when you flip it it always kind of settles in and it looks okay but let's see what the inside looks like it's not terrible but this is why i don't like top stitching my linings because it just you have no control when you can't see it oh sorry when you can't see it, you have no control and see it gets a little cattywampus there which i highly doubt my three-year-old niece is going to notice that but my heart does And it will not go on. Okay, we are getting close-ish to the end. So that's what it looks like now. Um, so the, what we need to do is close up our bottoms here. And luckily the uh, basics where I didn't do too much. I'm glad I didn't go for full on glue or double stick tape because you have to take these apart. So we're gonna take our linings and lay our bottoms together and then our exteriors. And so this is gonna create the full loop of the backpack and we do it separately and then when we flip it 
it'll hide these seams. So I'm just gonna do everything all at once. And then of course you can get a bit fiddly, but you've got this. Okay, and then finally this guy here. And so I'm seeing my excess on the gusset mirror itself down here, which is actually a good sign. So then the bag won't be lopsided. So you can see I've got about a quarter, just under a quarter of an inch on both sides here, of excess, which is fine. So now that I've got all of those clipped, I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch. Um, I'm fairly certain. Yes. Yeah, so this is a three eighths seam allowance. I'm going to kick it at a quarter inch on my exterior. And then I'm going to do three eighths on my interior. So then hopefully I'll get some good nesting action, some Russian nesting doll action in there. So a quarter inch seam allowance and three eighths inch but do whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm actually, okay, I'm going to start a quarter of an inch out here, and then I'm going to go into three eighths of an inch in here. And the reason I'm doing that is because the back panels are going to be basically one piece, and then we're going to do binding. So I need the, this measurement to all be the same and line up nicely. So a quarter inch to three eighths paper. I'm actually just going to grab my scissors and trim these down because then I can flip and add a stitch all the way around to make sure that everything is in place. Well, let's see, we might have not even actually have to flip or um, trim it down. Let's see how it looks. If I make this bag like one bag out of all vinyl, I might just not do a lining, you know, just like put a zipper in and leave the lining off, and then it'll make the construction a lot easier because the vinyl is soft, so it's a little fiddly. Not too bad. All right, so now what I want to do is I just want to add a stitch all the way around this gusset section here so that way nothing is shifty and moves around in the next few steps. And so I'm going to make sure that my seams on the inside here are laying opposite each other. So I have my main panel seams going to the right and then I have my lining seams going to the left. Hopefully that'll make them lay nicely. Or you could do it the opposite. Choose your own adventure. But just make sure that they're going in opposing directions. And 
And then ultimately what you should see is that the seams meet up and they lay on each other directly. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the inside. I'm actually gonna flip it back out so I can stitch from the cork side. And then because I've already quilted all this, I don't even need to do my stitching there, but I'm gonna start right here on this little side panel and then stitch around all the way. So this is all done and ready to go. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this down because the tricky part is that when we lay our back pieces on here, we want everything to be even because if it's not, then you're going to have different like it's going to be thicker on one side and shorter on the other side. And so you want it to be as even as possible. And so you can see I have that weird overhang here that I need to deal with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure and see how wide this ended up. So I'm at 2.75 here. And I'm about the same there. So what I need is if my zipper is where the bag, the shape of the bag takes or starts that measurement, then I need to cut my cork up at that 2.75 inch mark. So I measured from where the edge of this section is, the gusset, and then lined up my 2.75 inch mark, which coincidentally is just right at the edge of my zipper teeth, which that's what I feel like is the natural fold of the bag anyways. Like if you're looking at it straight ahead, that's where the fold is. So. 2.75 inches from the edge of my zipper teeth, and it just so happens to be right at that end mark. But so that is what I'm gonna use as my measurement line. I'm just gonna make a couple lines all the way around and then trim this part down too. I did transfer my center mark though. Yep, and then it meets up perfectly on that side. All right, so now we are nice and even, and it's all the same width. Okay, so I'm gonna move that to the side and get my two backing pieces here. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly add a pocket on the lining. The pattern is written with a little mesh pocket here for you to put like, you know, applesauce packs, things like that. But I'm just gonna leave mine plain. And then so as the pattern goes, you just lay these wrong sides together and then you baste around the entire edge. So I'm just gonna toss a couple clips and then I'm gonna go over there and base the edge. I'm not gonna make you watch that. It's pretty self-explanatory. So I will be right back. I just can't get over how freaking cute this little backpack back is. I just, I mean, it makes me wanna just squeal with excitement because it's just so little. Like, look at my hand. I don't have a like exponentially large hand. 
and it's just so cute. You know, I'm so used to making big, big backpacks and it's just, everything is so tiny. Okay, anyways, I digress. So I've got it all basted. And then now what we do, oh, I forgot. We're not gonna add this quite yet because what we're gonna do, because this back section is bound, binded. Okay, let me show you this one. So this is how we finish it off on the inside, which, wow, I did a pretty bang up job on that one. Look at that. Um, I'm gonna lay my bias tape, bias tape? Why am I having a brain fart? Oh, of course I don't have the, the extra full bias tape. Yeah, this is this, okay. But I'm gonna lay that first before I stitch this down. So hold on, I'll be back. I'm gonna find a color. All right, so I cut 28 inches or 27 inches of bias tape. Yeah, 26 and a half really. So 26 and a half, 27, whatever um, of bias tape. And then I have, oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. I need all those. Um, I flipped my panel wrong side out. So it's like a little rough and wavy in there, but that's fine. And then so what we're gonna do is we need to wrap our bias tape all the way around before we lay our back on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfold my tape here all the way and then fold it in about a half an inch and finger press it really well. And this is going to make a nice fold once we get all the way around with our bias tape. So I'm folding it with the fold facing toward me. And then now you just need to drape your bias tape all the way around this edge. And then when you meet back up, leave this one all the way unfolded. You don't have to fold it at the edge. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and baste all the way around, or you can just move on and lay your back inside. So you want the exterior of your back to face in toward the bag, because then that way, when we flip it right side out, it'll be fine. Um, but I am actually gonna mark my centers here because I didn't before. So I'm gonna do my little snips because I really want to ensure that this back piece is as straight as possible because if it isn't, it'll make the whole bag Humpty Dumpty sit sideways. And trust me, I have several bags that do that. So best to do it right the first time. Okay, so I'm just exposing that. So that's where my middle line is there. And then I have my midline here as well. So I'm just going to line up my top midline here. Toss a little clippity doo Now in the pattern, she has you stitched across the top and then across the bottom and then your sides. And so you can go ahead and do that if you want. Um, I'm just gonna quote myself from earlier when I said all gas, no brakes. I'm gonna see if I can't do it in one go. Now this little curve down here is gonna be the hardest part. It's just a tight curve, that one inch. So what I find is that if you kind of take your thumb and lay it right on that curve and kind of push it into place, and then if you pull the whole panel and kind of flatten it, then it lays decently. The other option is that you can snip into the gusset and it'll cause it to splay open a little bit more. I'll show you that on this side. So I'm just gonna do teeny tiny snips. Now my gusset is a little weird because I pieced it. Let's see. Then so you take your finger or take your thumb, lay it in here and just kind of pull it out. Whoa. And then see, so because I snipped into the gusset, which you can't see now because there's a clip over it. Let's see. But it kind of, it creates it a, a 
an opening so it allows it to spread nicely. Okay, so now that I have this all done, I'm gonna go to my machine and with my backing side down, I'm gonna stitch all the way around and put this bad boy together. Okay, if you've been basting, make sure that you lower your stitch length so that you don't have to go over this a bunch of times. I'm gonna start right here where I pieced my two together. And stitch all the way around. Now this is where my strap anchors are, so I'm adding a couple back stitches here. Yeah, I always forget that I have a, a thingy now. What do we call those? Um, oh, I don't know where it is though, of course. But the little pokey thing that's on the other side of my wooden seam ripper that people used to hold their stuff. Do I look so professional doing this? I always just use my finger. I guess I'll always use my finger until I catch it one day and then I won't. Just kidding, I really don't want to speak that to the universe. I do not ever want to sew over my finger. crazy. I didn't do that. I just cracked my nail. I was just saying, wouldn't that be crazy if I did it on camera? All right, so trim your threads. And here we go. This is what it looks like from this side. It looks pretty nice and even here. It's this inner stitch line and it's nice and it has like really sweet curves here so that's awesome that's what i wanted to see now i'm just going to use my peeking shears i'm going to trim up in these corners and then anywhere that it's a little long so you can see that my back panel is overhanging a touch so i'm going to trim that down That should be okay. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to flip our bias tape up and over our edge to encase that raw seam. Now, bias tape edges are definitely not my desired finish. But the more I practice, the better I get at them. So I don't totally hate them anymore. But I did for a really long time. So what I'm trying to do here, I don't know if you can see, but I did, so I have that folded edge. I'm just trying to make sure first off that everything is even. And then you take this other part and lay it and then fold those to where they become the same seam or as best as possible. I'm always a little messy at this point. And then the goal is to fold it up and over so that it encases that raw edge and it does it nicely. Now again, I'm not perfect with this at all. All we can do is our best, right? I 
Oh, I just remembered. I want to put a little tag in here. Ooh, I remember that. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. I put the we're both one of a kind on her tutu that I made her for Christmas. But that's about the only, oh, I can do this other one. I'm gonna put this little you matter tag in here. And then, so I just figured I can put it like right around here. And then whenever she opens the bag, I mean, she can't read yet, but eventually she'll be able to read that. I really wanted to put a little Juno tag on it and I tried branding it, but it, did, it just didn't come out good enough. I wanted it to be like really apparent and it just wasn't. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And now what we need to do is we need to go and stitch all the way around. And I think I might switch out my thread here so that it blends in a little better. Ooh, that's a hot tip. If you have a tough to unzip zipper, make sure you unzip it first. I didn't, but zipper by the yard is pretty easy to unzip from the inside. And so I'm just pushing, applying a lot of pressure here on this top curve. If you listen close, you can hear Brandon singing. Oh my gosh, that little back. I just can't. It's so freaking cute. And then there's our little tag right there. Bink. You can see it. How cute. Now it's some use this will settle in, which will be nice. That's, that is one good thing, or I mean, there's lots of good things about binding, but when you bind a bag, it adds so much structure to the seam that this alone will add a lot of, you know, shape, which I forgot about until just now. That is pretty stinking cute. And I love the little, what you call it? Quilting. But the back, oh my gosh, the back is just so freaking cute. I think, I think that's it, folks. Let me know what you think. Okay, friends, we made it to the end of yet another sewing tutorial. I hope that you loved this first little project for the Backpack Bash Bonanza, whatever you want to call it, Triple B. Um, be sure to tune in next week for an upcoming backpack to be revealed at that time. Um, if you are so inclined, you can join my Patreon group. They are getting all of these videos early and ad free along with all of my other videos and access to patterns and behind the scenes goodies. And so if you want to join, please find the link in the description box below. Having patrons allows me the time to make these videos for you, especially free. Um, that being said, there is no pressure and I understand that 
you know, not everybody can afford to toss money out to a stranger. So no pressure, but if you're so inclined, come join us over on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next week.